Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Russia has launched its most widespread airstrike since the start of the war in Ukraine, raining cruise missiles on busy cities during rush hour and knocking out power and heat in what President Vladimir Putin called revenge for the explosion on the Kerch Bridge linking Crimea to Russia. At least 10 people were killed and 60 wounded. Polish President Andrzej Duda spoke to his Ukrainian counterpart, Vladimir Zelensky, and later to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Missiles tore into busy intersections, parks and tourist sites in the centre of the capital, Kiev. Explosions were reported in Lviv, Ternopil, Zitomir in western Ukraine, Dnipro, Kremenchuk in central Ukraine, Zaporizhia in the south and Kharkiv in the east. Ukrainian officials said at least 10 people were killed and scores injured and swathes of the country were left without power. Shortly after the blast, the Polish and Ukrainian presidents, Andrzej Duda and Vladimir Zelensky, spoke over the telephone and agreed to coordinate international efforts further to isolate Russia. We will work on consolidating international support Support, strengthening Ukraine's defence capabilities, restoring the destroyed, as well as increasing Russia's isolation, Zelensky wrote on Twitter. Jakub Kumok, President Duda's international policy advisor, said that the two presidents had also discussed further supplies of the means that are required for the defence of Ukraine. The Russian war crimes make our involvement in the matter even stronger, Kumok added. Later, Polish President Andrzej Duda and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg held urgent consultations. The talks focused on further supplies of defensive equipment to Ukraine spoke with President Andrzej Duda on continued support from NATO allies to Ukraine and thanked him for Poland's key contributions. Russia continues its unprovoked aggression against an independent sovereign nation. We will stay the course. Meanwhile, in Kiev and other cities, thousands of residents raced to bomb shelters as air raid silence sounded throughout the day. The barrage of dozens of cruise missiles fired from air, land and sea was the biggest wave of airstrikes to hit locations away from the front line, at least since the initial volleys on the war's first day, 24th of February. World media are reporting residents of Kiev who took shelter in the metro and comforted each other by singing traditional folk songs. The morning is difficult. We are dealing with terrorists, dozens of missiles, Iranian Shahid drones. They have two targets, the energy facilities throughout the country, Kiev region, Khmelnytsky region, Lviv and Dnipro, Vinitsia, Frankiv region, Zaporizhia, Sony region, Kharkiv region, Zitomir region, Kirovrad region, the south of the country. They want panic and chaos. They want to destroy our energy system. They are hopeless. The second target is people. This time the goals were specially chosen to cause as much damage as possible. But we are Ukrainians. We help each other. We believe in ourselves. We restore everything that is destroyed. There may be temporary power outages now, but there will never be an interruption in our confidence, our confidence in victory. Really, I, I think because they are bastards, <laughs> that's it. They want to destroy our people, our infrastructure, everything. I really don't know, and I'm extremely angry, you know, by our kids, our people should, uh, uh, should, should yet, I don't know, how what to say, why, for what? This is the city of Kyiv, just uh, an hour ago, this attack, another attack, continued attack of Russia on Ukraine, killed civilians, millions of people living in the city of Kiev. And this war and so-called free world must help us Ukrainians, continue to help us Ukrainians to stop this genocide of the Ukrainian population and destruction of our life, our infrastructure and our cities. We woke up after the first explosion. We live across the road here. As I understand, the second explosion was near the Shevchenko University. Then our whole building started to shake, but our windows didn't shatter. We quickly went to the bathroom, but after reading there was a massive Ukrainian shelling, we decided to take shelter in the underground. You know, everyone was calm there. Everyone was united. They gave my child a place to sit in the train carriage, and we were there for the entire time. No one panicked. The Council of Europe has awarded detained Russian opposition politician Vladimir Karamoza the Václav Havel Human Rights Prize for what it describes as his bravery in standing up to Russia's leaders. 
Karamurza, who holds both British and Russian citizenship, was a pallbearer at the 2018 funeral of US Senator John McCain, worked as a close aide to opposition leader Boris Nemtsov, who was shot dead in central Moscow in 2015. Twice, in 2015 and 2017, Karamurza became suddenly ill and fell into a coma in what he said were poisonings by the Russian security services. Moscow denied involvement. He is now in pre-trial detention on suspicion of spreading false information about the armed forces under new laws passed eight days after Russia sent troops into Ukraine on the 20th. 4th of February. It takes incredible courage in today's Russia to stand against a power in place. Tiny Cox, President of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, said in a statement. Professor Douglas W. Diamond of the University of Chicago has been awarded the Sveriges Reichsbank Prize in Economic Scientists in memory of Alfred Nobel 2022, along with former U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben S. Bernanke and Professor Philip Divig of Washington University in St. Louis. Diamond and Dibvig develop models that explain why banks exist, how their role in society makes them vulnerable to rumours about their impending collapse, and how society can lessen this vulnerability. The duo also presented a solution to bank vulnerability in the form of deposit insurance from the government. Bernanke, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, used historical sources and statistical methods to understand how the ties between the financial system and the economy break down in a crisis been trying to think more and more about how the financial system is organized, why it's organized the way it is, how it's organized, and in particular why things like financial crises seem to be recurrent parts, uh, not frequently but infrequently uh, in the financial system. And actually the whole point of a lot of the work with Phil Dibvig, the paper, uh, the second paper they mentioned, a lot of the work with Phil Dibvig is trying to understand why we sometimes see financial crises when we could possibly set it up in a way where there would never be a crisis, but you're actually better off leaving things vulnerable to the fear of fear itself or the self-fulfilling prophecy of a crisis, hoping that that never happens and you, you can do things that you couldn't do otherwise. Donald Tusk, a male with pronouns he and him, Former Prime Minister and current leader of the main opposition party has received an award from the 14th Women's Congress that gathered in Wrocław. Two months ago, Tusk, a former Conservative Catholic, claimed that his party will only promote candidates who agree with the women's unrestricted right to an abortion up to the 12th week after the conception of the child. The winner is Donald Tusk. Even many women's rights advocates were puzzled, such as Paulina henning Kluska from the opposition Polska 2050 party. For seven years, women have been pining in the streets, opposing oppressive power, so that in the end, some guy will come along and claim the prize. It came out as it always does. This is an over-the-top award and is more a, of a representation of certain expectations of an opposition politician rather than an award that already validates achievements and accomplishments. The Women's Congress Committee awarded the prize for Donald Tusk's government's introduction of refurbishment for in vitro fertilization and ratification of the Istanbul Convention, among other things. However, according to representatives of the left, the former prime minister has done far too little for women. Mr. Donald Tusk has committed many sins. One could really do a lot more for women's rights, human rights, for the social situation of women, fighting inequality among women. Awarding a prize to a man who, when he was Prime Minister of the government, both raised the retirement age for women by seven years and rural women, rural housewives by 12 years, should rather not be approved of. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.